we just finished building our kitchenette area. Here's how it all went down. This is the good life. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the 30 day van build. We are officially on episode nine, I wanna say, and it is day 15, we have reached the halfway point. It's time to build a kitchenette. Remember, we're still a little bit out of order because our windows are still back ordered. They should be getting here any day now, and then we can carry on with building things in the order that they probably should be going. First up, uh, I'm gonna need you to subscribe. So you can go ahead and hit that button down there, hit subscribe and turn the notifications on because there's new van build videos every single Sunday. That is always a tongue twister. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Over and over again. Going right back to the start. Starting from where we begin. And I don't wanna be your friend. I just wanna. Kitchenette area is gonna go here, two by threes across, two by threes down. And I believe we're gonna go kitchenette all the way to our bed post. It's always a little tricky when you're starting to iron out the details of dimensions, but then once everything comes together, it kind of just falls into place like a puzzle piece. We are going to finish our backing here. We're gonna be putting this same quarter inch ply. Our counter is gonna be up 36. If we do our 28 this way and 35 this way, then we could still use this piece of backing for behind our fridge and cabinet area over here and we don't have to waste a whole piece. Think ahead a couple steps when possible so you can optimize the wood sheets you purchased. Cover this little backing with some polycrylic. I said it right. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and cut some legs. Okay, bye. Don't leave this moment. Hey Jason, I'm done. What's taking you so long? You've literally cut one piece of wood. Three. These don't look the right size. We got these done, plywood done. That's about it. We still need these, all these strips. We might run out of wood. All right, so we've been searching for a screw that just disappeared for the past 10 minutes. I still don't see it. You ready? You still don't see it? No. You're gonna be mind blown. Ready where this fell? Oh, I see it now. You see it? was hidden. Unbelievable. Back to work. You just wanted a break. I wanted a break. Huh. That's it right there. So now that we have our fixed structure, we can base our kitchenette framing from that. Well, it has started to rain. We're gonna give it a couple minutes, but if it doesn't stop, we're gonna count this as a half a day because we can't be gypped out of a whole day just because it started raining, you know what I mean? We did get rained out yesterday. We are probably gonna get rained out today as well. It's like an 80% chance of rain, so we're just gonna call this the second half of day 15. Of course, you know, people are repaving the road today, so that's just the way it works. But where we left off is we need to finish making the frame of the bed on that side so that way we can build off of it for the kitchenette. Yesterday we only got like eight cuts of wood done because Jason is speedy mix speed speed. I keep on running back to you. I can't lose this time. We have the framing for the kitchenette ready to go. We don't have it uh, drilled into the floor because we're gonna be taking it out to paint it and prime it and all that kind of stuff. Fit, 
great news. They have officially finished paving the road. We're just about done with all the framing and the sidewalls. We also just finished putting the wood glue into the nails. We're letting it dry so we could scrape it. It's time to work with this butcher block. Jason, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. Team lift. Ooh, girl. We're pretty much prepped for our countertop. We double checked our measurements. This is a pretty expensive piece of wood here, so we want to make sure everything is as close as possible. And you know, if at the end of the day something happens, well, it's just a piece of wood. So now Jason's getting ready to cut and he's going to put his, he's going to put his saw through a little bit of a challenge. Yay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if the, uh, the little battery powered uh, Milwaukee circular saw was going to be able to cut this bitcher block, but it took it like a champ. I keep on running back to you. Definitely uh, like the uh, rip cut better than the cross cut. I mean, I like the cross cut better than the rip cut. Come on down. Uh oh. Somebody didn't measure right. It's a good thing it's the second half of day 15 because it's starting to rain again. So we had to quickly pick up. Wish we could keep going, but we gotta pick up a little bit. If it does stop, we might just work a little bit more on the counter we'll see you guys in day 16 where we are going to freaking do a bunch of stuff i'll see you there make sure to subscribe hey what's going on guys welcome back to day 16 we are going to finish this kitchen area today i don't care what jason says we're going to get it done I'm on the loose. Like moving right along it is prime time Literally, time to prime. Shit, we forgot to add our corner beam. We have our wall in place now with our garage break apart, whatever, I don't know if that's what you want to call it. But now once we put in the kitchenette, we'll just put it up against here and then that's how we'll know everything is in there nice and secure. So while the first coat of primer stays drying, we want to give it another coat. We're going to route the edges of this butcher block and hope we don't mess up the whole thing. Jason's over there practicing. He hasn't used the router in like three years. So you think you could do it? Oh my. It's doing this round good, but this is like a hard... So it needs more. You think? Is that how that works? I don't know. Send it. Let's stop yeah, talking let's about it. And let's be about it. I won't feel like I'm gonna get my noggin cracked open when I hit it. While we wait for the second coat to dry, our butcher block is just about ready. So we're gonna do a little bit of work on the other side of the kitchen area, which brings us to this week's sponsor. Isotherm. We want to thank our friends over at Isotherm for sponsoring this video. We chose to go with the Cruise Elegance 130 fridge because it was the most similar to our current truck fridge in our other van and we like the size of it. We never had to like worry about Jason's beers fitting in there. We never had to worry about my food fitting in there. It was just a all around win-win. We also like the door open. We don't like uh, having to like, what is it called? A chest style. Yeah, chest style. So this is what we chose to go with. It has, it's basically our fridge, just much more elegant, hence the name. It's the same compressor as the truck fridge, the Dan Foss. So they're super quiet, super efficient. They're made for this. Isotherm is by Wabasto. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but if you check out their website, they have different types of fridges on there. They have the truck style, they have the trunk style, they have little Stainless. mini. Yes, they have stainless versions as well. We went with black since we're kind of doing the darker theme. Enough chit-chatting. We have to build a frame around this so that way we know what else to do. 
Hey, our lunch is ready. So this big guy is going to be going right over there. We got to put some quarter inch ply here to cover up all this wool. All the way to the floor, right? Other line. It's a pimple. That big thing on right there, that massive thing. That was chapstick. <laughs> I told you I ate my chapstick here. Bianca. What? It's too short. Ruh -ruh. It's okay, guys. It worked out. Worked out, right, Jason? We'll make it work? Mm -hmm. Perfect. The key thing about these isotherm fridges is that the door is reversible. So right now it's opening this way. There she goes. Door for sale. Just kidding. Voila. Now we have a left sided open. The reverse door fridge is super clutch for this build layout that we did because it would just be really awkward if we had to pass the fridge every time we wanted to open it. Ay, 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 mama, ma, 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 ya. No changing locations now. It's more secure than our other one. Uh huh. Our other one would. Our other one didn't have this fancy bracket. This little thing is making me a little nervous with the suction. And we get out. Watch out. Nice full opening. Next up, let's figure out how to cut the undermount hole for the sink. So we marked from the bottom where our two by fours were, and then we're making sure that we have enough space for our little clamps to be inside of the two by fours. Pretty much on the last project that we're gonna be able to do for the day, and that is cutting the sink for the under, cutting the hole for the undermount sink. Cutting the butcher block for the undermount sink. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing I said, but anyways. So in order to use the route, well, we want to use the router to make the hole so that it's nice and smooth on the inside. So you, you see a nice piece of book piece of butcher block. So to do that, we're going to use the router. Basically, we're going to make a frame around the frame of our sink cutout. And that way, the router will just go up, across, down, back, and circles. And as it goes, it will keep dropping lower, right? Jason, right? It's called the jig, yeah. It'll keep dropping lower as you go around, right? I have to manually drop it lower, it's not going to do it by itself, but yes. So you go like a couple times when it's clean, then you drop it and it's in the same spot, the same cut, over and over again, until the hole is cut out all smooth. So that's what we're building right now. Womp, womp, womp. This won't work out. Attempt two. They're a little weenie, but hopefully they do the trick. Cause if we just smile, we can forget our love. Got these guys nailed down. Jason is doing practice runs without it on to make sure he moves the little blade the right way. This is gonna be fun. Ooh. Can you turn it off and then? Yeah, I can turn it off. So then turn it off, one circle. I wish I had a plunge router. I don't know what that is, but no plumbers around here. Plunge router. <laughs> We're done with plumbing. Right, you ready? Don't screw it up, Jason. You got it. I'll be here, moral support. If you just smile, we can forget all of our troubles. For a while, we can just live inside this moment, you and I. Moment of truth. Whoa. Hey! We gotta clean all this up, obviously. Um, uh, I hope this sink fits. All right, well, you guys will see if it fits in day seven, day 17. Later, Jason. Welcome back. It is a beautiful day to finish a kitchen. What do you think? Yeah. So we just finished sanding up the rest of this butcher block. Pretty excited with how it came out. The router on the edge of this came out super nice and that is all ready to go. We also went ahead and drilled where our uh, sink is gonna go through this. Faucet? Our, yeah, this is a sink. The Where our faucet is gonna go through the sink. Oh, I see how this works. Wow, genius plan here. We had to do a little bit of an adjustment here. So these mounting brackets that come with it for the undermount of the sink come with, the screws are nice, but then they come with these like little white little adapter pieces adapter or piece. whatever so that the screw could go into. Uh, and we're thinking that it might be for like quartz or something like that, 
we feel more comfortable using wood screws. We feel like the, the course of the screws are really gonna hold it in a little better. We had these guys laying around and these are what we're gonna use. There's six, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's six mounts. So we're gonna put two on each of the long sides and then one on the edges. And you know, hopefully that with the silicone, hopefully the sink doesn't just drop out. <laughs> silicone time. We just got some 100% waterproof silicone, 30 minute water ready. Don't worry, I got everything. You got it? I have a circle here. You good over there? I mean, we have to... Oh. Get through the darkness knowing we'll find the light If we just smile If we just If we just What we're going to do now is we're going to drill from the bottom all the way until the drill bit pops up on the other side. We'll flip it and then continue from the other side. And go. <laughs> Goodness, look at all that smoke. <laughs> burning it. <coughs> oh shit, literally about to start a fire. Give it a second, it's literally burning it. This is gonna on fire. All right, Jason. Dullest freaking drill bit in the whole game right You're here. You're probably older than me. Probably. So nice. It's crooked. I've been trying to tell you you were cutting in there crooked. You don't listen. Now it is time to secure this guy to the ground. Finally time to begin staining and seeing just how close we can get of a color match to our ceiling and floor. What do you think? You think it looks the same, Jason? I think he said yes. He's not wearing his I'm thinking shirt, so I'm not really sure. Speak up for the people in the back. I didn't say it's gonna be wrong, it's gonna be different. I think it's gonna be- It's gonna be close. Perfect. So we were trying to match the stain from the roof to the floor, which is, and to the butcher block, which is three different types of wood. We got pine, birch, and then <laughs> imitation oak. The goal with the black not like is that. not to do that. Too much, too much, too much sauce. Jason, no, 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 no. Wait a second, <laughs> Bianca, relax, bro. It looks like poop stains on there. Well, you're the one that wants to add black. Less sauce, Jason. Got some gray. That doesn't look like our ceiling. I told you it's not gonna look the same. <laughs> I think we need to add more browns. Yeah, if he just said, I, I, I. Our kitchenette butcher block countertop is in. It is a pretty close match to the ceiling. It's not a perfect a match to the floor, but you know, it's a different type of wood as Jason. All the way down, Griffin. Well, hello, where are you? So, do you have a flathead for me? And there's our little sinky sink sink. We have the PEX cables ran to the attachments like we had, clean into the bottom of the faucet. And then here we have the drain, some contraption we had to set up here, going to the flexible hose, and then into another contraption with a cutoff valve here. It's testing time. Are we good? Yeah. Bunch of stuff in here that's just gonna stick. Whoa! We got water. And leaks. I see none. So close the valve, the drain valve, and fill it up. See what happens. Oh, okay. Use your big girl. There you go. All right. Oh, so I can't. I can't. I can't. Look at you. Well, I'm trying not to break it out of the thing. All go right. Ahead. So our valve is closed now, and ideally, this should fill up. Ideally, no. Well, it will fill up. If we don't run out of water first. All right. I think it's full. Quiet on set. There's all the water. We do use like organic bio safe soap. So we're not like just dumping a bunch of crap into the stuff. And the little pieces of food that go down there are food for the squirrels. When my head is full of questions and the sky is full of rain. When I'm worrying about what I can't change. 
I take a look at my reflection. What's going on guys? I feel like every single day I tell you today is gonna be the day that we finish the kitchenette area. But you know what? I feel confident. Today is gonna be the day that we finish the kitchenette area. What we're doing right now is we're finishing up our wraparound blockage area of the fridge and adding more butcher block on this side because counter space is a necessity for us. And then, oh my gosh, I forgot. What? <laughs> the cabinetry. <laughs> That's for today too. No, no, we're gonna finish today. We just got a call that our windows are being pushed back again another week and a week and a half. It's really frustrating because we've had to do a lot of this build sort of out of order because we don't have the windows. It sucks, but you just gotta roll with the punches sometimes. All right, I guess back to building what we can build. That fits like a glove. The last wall cut is a little bit tricky because we want to have like a little squishy squish in there. Because, you know. Everybody knows what squishy squish is. Yeah, exactly. Right here, squishy squish. It goes whoosh, whoosh. We're going to be. Okay, bye. So this little tool here we picked up for the van build, it's called a Craig Rip Cut, something of that sort. And it's basically so you could use the factory edge and cut straight lines. So when you mount this plate to your circular saw, this guy goes along the, the edge and your lines are straightish. Has to cut on this side goodness but it's in and we like it because it's not too blocking oh hi <laughs> it doesn't block off the space too much with the like rollback what we did is added a little male female plug to the fridge wires so that way if for some reason we have to pull this guy out it's not like hardwired in we just pop the the little connectors out and we'll be good to go. Hoppa. The fridge is ran and we just gotta pull this guy back through the back there. What is up guys? Oh, that was great Jason. Thanks so much for introducing it. Day 19 we're back at it again and we're finally starting our drawers and cabinetry making. I'll drop the link down below to the guy who drew this better and explained it in more detail, he's a woodworking guy. We're doing two cabinets here. So we measured the opening and then we added a quarter inch for each side and then we split it to get two of these cabinet openings. Then from these, we're gonna be using three and a half inch pieces of wood to make the shaker style cabinets. So you measure the opening of the hole and then add your quarter inch on each side for the uh, aesthetics so that's how long your rails I'm sorry so that's how long your styles are going to be and then for the insides you measure the size of your cabinet top and then you subtract the three and a half for each of the styles and that gets you your centerpiece and then you have to add back in three quarter inch on each side because those are going to be like the little tongue and grooves that slide into the tracks. You do some calculations to get your center uh, piece which we're going to be using quarter inch birch. So we got our cut list here for the two cabinets and we're just going to go ahead and start cutting. Did you understand all that Jason? You sure? Yes. Okay let's do it. These shaker style cabinets look really cool but they are a pain in the ass to figure out. I know that's a bit confusing. It took me like I don't know two or three times of watching this guy's video to kind of understand and break it down. But once you break it down in your head and you finally understand it, it kind of all clicks together. <laughs> Pun intended. And then it's pretty straightforward. So let's see if when we actually cut it, if it's as straightforward as it seems. For our rails and styles, we picked up some pre-primered finger joints. One by four is the thickness that we decided to go with. So right now, Jason is just marking all of our runners and styles so we can get those all cut in one shot. Right.
what we're doing now is making the sliding tracks for everything to fit into. So we made a line exactly in the middle. It's gonna run through just like that to make the track. Run them through, stack them all, and then when you get through, you bring them through again and you flip them and you do it the other way so that way your quarter inch stays in the middle-ish. So this is what we're working with when it's cut on the half side. You can see it's a little bit off-centered. When we flip it around and cut the other line at the same exact spot, it's gonna fix that. So should. You, it should fix this. You wanna do this to all your styles and runners. Trace the ball, take the lead, and let it set you free. Cause when you need someone to trust, we are always there. This is what you have to do to all of the rails. This is what your end uh, rails will look like. That's one cabinet drawer. Finish cutting out all the little tongues and groovies. We've got clamps ready to go. We're going to go ahead and use wood glue to tie everything together and then clamp it nice and tight so that it gives it time to dry. Mm -hmm. Nice and tight. We're gonna let them dry for a little bit and go eat some lunch because we are hungry. And we're back. And we're tired. We took off the, uh, the clamps and everything held together, so they are good. These are my beautiful diagrams for our drawers. Two of them are gonna be shakers, and then these are too small to be shakers, so they're just gonna be like three quarter inch ply with like, I don't know, maybe some scribble scrabbles on them. Yeah, it's gonna be this. I really like the uh, shaker style over the what we had in the other van just one sheet gives it a little more dimension cabinets get and primed and waiting so while, oh yeah we also went ahead and made our little drawer boxes so while we do that jason is gonna come in here and we're gonna install some drawer slides this is our cute little top drawer so we picked up a craig set like i think it was like a hundred bucks and it's like supposed to make installing drawer slides way easier we'll see the idea of these things are that they use your flat edge it will keep your your track flat the same exact pieces flip around and hook so that way you can put the drawer on and it will support it while you screw it in three drawers are in this is really kicking our ass. It's time for the face plates. Put the spacer in here, and then we're trying to like drill the face plates in from the back. Don't go through. There they are. It does look pretty nice though. Looks legit. I really like the look of the shaker style cabinets. They give it that extra little cherry on top. This is another Craig tool that came in the kit. It's for uh, hinges. Comes with this contraption to drill. You get the camera. <laughs> All right, perfect. <laughs> I'll get the camera and I'll get the screws. At least we can do it with the open, no? <laughs> no, you have to close it. Come on, Bianca. <laughs> I'll get inside. <laughs> you probably fit in there. At least I do. You want me to do it from the inside? <laughs> you want me to do it from the inside? Oh, we made two of the same ones. <laughs> it's been a really long day. Oh, we did. No, we just turned around and the same thing. <laughs> just messing with you. Wow, look at that soft close. How bad is the gap? Yep, we're gonna need a spacer, folks. But it's okay, we'll do that whenever. And I think that's gonna be it for this one. It really made a difference getting the kitchenette installed and the fridge on the other side. It's starting to look like a conversion van. We'll end up polyacrylicking the uh, countertop, give it a little bit of a shine. And then over here, we got the fridge set up with the wall. This is gonna go into a bench over here. And then we're gonna do some overhead cabinets here as well. So it's coming together. Fridge looks real nice. All right guys, so I think on that note, that is going to end the kitchenette video. Overall, it looks it looks pretty decent. So remember, this is just a primer. We, we will end up painting everything, but we kind of just wanna do it at once. So we'll tape it off and do it like a house when we get to that point. But for right now, it's just Kills Primer while we keep getting everything dirty. The butcher block came out pretty nice. It matched pretty good. The undermount sink looks looks good. And the black uh, 
faucet and stuff matches really good as well. The fridge ties together with everything super nice. We just gotta fill it up with some coffee and beer, you know? Coffee? In the fridge? Yeah, iced coffee. I don't think that's how you drink it. I don't know. But uh yeah, and then once we paint we'll we'll put this guy up here, which will be flip out and give us a table extension which I think would will help us out a lot. Anyway, that is going to wrap up this episode of the 30 Day Van Build. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Isotherm, for sponsoring this video. We can't wait to stock up our fridge, and we will see you guys next Sunday. Later! Next time on the 30 Day Van Build. This is hey! Why can't anything be easy?